What's up guys, it's Colin Coates from Built to Wander. We've been abusing the hell out of the Triton JL and our Blaze JT builds over the last six months. And we finally have some downtime where we can tear into them and do some of the more in-depth maintenance before the next off-road season begins. On the Triton JL, we're gonna replace the pinion bearing and pinion seal in our rear Curry Extreme 60 housing. And on the Blaze JT, the Nitto 40s were finally just too much stress on the Dana 44s and we broke a ring and pinion on the front axle. We're gonna tear that one apart afterwards and replace the ring and pinion. And we're gonna show you guys how that whole process goes down. And then ultimately, we'll get the Jeeps back out for a quick trip in the snow in this case and uh, make sure everything sounds good, feels good after the maintenance we've done. Follow along as we get some much needed maintenance done on these rigs and get them back to tip top shape so they're ready to rock for our next big off-road trip. We nut and bolt each of our Jeeps after every off-roading trip, but there's some maintenance that's a little bit more in depth that we finally have a chance to get to. So before our last trip to Moab, we were hearing a noise coming from our Curry Extreme 60 rear axle. So we pulled the diff cover to perform a differential service, make sure everything looked good. At that time, we noticed that a pinion bearing was going bad. We only had about a day before our trip, so we, we went ahead and left, let it be. We just put some new fluid in. But now that we're back and we have some downtime, we're gonna tear the axle back apart, pull the ring and pinion, and replace that bearing. So to get started, we're gonna to have to drop the hardened steel skid plate that's underneath the Curry axle housing. That way we can get access to the drain plug, drain all the fluid out of the axle, and then we'll pull the differential cover, and then we'll also pull the axle shafts. So when we pulled the drive flange covers to get access to the axle shafts, we saw puking gear oil, which tells us that we've got a axle seal leaking um, and we're actually leaking on both sides. So we're gonna have to get in there, replace those seals. Um, but it's another reason why you check this stuff from time to time, because had we not pulled those covers, we wouldn't have been able to see the leak. So we've got the axle shafts pulled. We're ready to um, pull the carrier to get access to this pinion bearing. Um, setting up gears, pulling them out, knowing that you're gonna put them back in. It's a pretty tedious task, so you should definitely leave it up to the professionals. Fortunately, Matt Thompson at 3D Off-Road is helping us out. Not only does Matt do all of our full builds, but he also does all of our routine maintenance as well. So Matt, can you tell us what's the next step in the process? How are we ultimately gonna get to that pinion bearing and that pinion seal to replace those components? Well, we pulled the drive shaft. Next, we're checking the backlash. That way, if something changes, when you put the new bearings in, you need to know. That way you don't mess up your pattern. So it's important that when we set everything back up after we've replaced the bearing that the backlash matches? Correct. Everything should match and be the exact same after you've replaced it. Seals and bearings, they're wearable parts. We've been beating on the Triton JL with 40 inch Nitto tire trail grapplers, KMC beadlock wheels, it's a heavy wheel and tire combo. The Curry Extreme 60s are up to the task, but when you put them through enough abuse on extreme off-road trails, you have to be ready for some maintenance on wearable items. The ring and pinion are in great shape. The ARB air locker looks great. So all we have to do is just replace some of those wearable items. So we're super fortunate that that's it. And um, we're gonna continue on. So at this point, the housing's completely torn apart. I have to say this was a lot more intensive than even I realized. Fortunately, Matt, is able to kind of guide me through. And of course he's doing all the hard work right now, but um, <laughs> he's educating me, so that's super cool. So what do we have to do next, Matt? So next we have to go ahead and take apart the, um, the hubs, get the brakes off, tear the hubs apart, so we can get everything in the parts washer, get it all cleaned up. That way we can repack the bearings and make sure that when we put the new seals in that everything's gonna be great. We just got done cleaning everything. We even took the load bolt out of the Curry Extreme 60 housing and we cleaned it up. The load bolt is, is in there. It's um, meant to prevent ring gear deflection. We um, identified which pinion bearing was faulty and it was the actual head bearing, which they're actually, the head and tail are the same bearing, um, but these, these little rollers actually should be butter smooth when you run your finger across them. And on this one, which failed, um, you can kind of feel some burrs in them. It's a little rough when you run your finger over them. And then the race, 
right here, which the bearing sits in, um, has some rough spots as well. And you can actually visually see that as well as feel them. It's almost like pitted in areas. And it's from, um, you know, the bearing rubbing against that race. And eventually it creates that noise that we were hearing. So um, replacing that with a fresh bearing, fresh race, it should eliminate that noise altogether. And um, we should be good to go. New pinion bearings are in, the races for them are in, and we're getting ready to put the new pinion seal in. Matt, quickly tell me kind of what happened, why the old pinion uh, seal maybe failed, or how, how you can tell beyond seeing a visual leak. You know, once we got the seal out, um, we checked the rubber on it, and the rubber was really hard. So that means it's either dried out or it got really hot one time. You know, and now the new seal is very pliable, the spring will move, and so it ought to keep that uh, oil from leaking out. So we just put the Dana 44 ring gear next to our Dana 60 ring gear. Both are from Revolution Gear and Axle. Matt's running a 513 gear ratio in his Blaze JT build. I'm running 538s. The difference is the Dana 44 ring gear from Revolution Gear and Axle is eight and a half inches outside diameter, whereas our Dana 60 ring gear is nine and three quarter inches. So the contact patch or that surface area that's under contact is much greater in a Dana 60, which ultimately makes for a much stronger differential. So I just wanted to kind of put the two side by side so you guys can see what the actual difference is between like a stock Rubicon axle and uh, a Curry Extreme 60 or your other Dana 60 options out there. Ring and pinion are back inside the axle housing. Um, we went ahead and checked the backlash, everything matched up. But once we put the carrier back in, we added marking compound just to make sure that the pattern is exact. So everything looks really good, matched up perfectly. So we're gonna lay some silicone down, um, get the diff cover put back on, and then fill it back up with fluid, put the wheels and tires back on, and this sucker's done. So we're all squared away with the wearable items that we replaced on the Triton JL. Again, we didn't have any serious failures. The Curry Extreme 60s are great for 40 inch tires. However, on the Blaze JT, we're running 40 inch Nitto tire trail grapplers on a Dana 44 axle. Failure is bound to happen if you push them as hard as we have. Um, however, we're actually really impressed with the Revolution gears that we have in there now. Uh, after all the abuse we put them through, they've actually held up extremely well. We're kind of surprised that it took them this long to fail. So we went ahead we replaced those gears with the exact same thing. So Matt, we're getting ready to tear into your front axle to replace that broken ring and pinion. Um, what are the steps or what, what do we have to do to get that old ring gear out and put the new one in? You know, now that we have the um, tires off, we're gonna remove the tie rod in, uh, take the brakes apart, pull the axles out. We got the brakes removed, we pulled the axle shafts, inspected everything, and the axle shafts look great. So there's no, no twisting uh, at the splines, everything looks good. So. We're gonna go ahead and pull the carrier. And Matt got the ring gear off the carrier. Well, after um, you know inspecting the rest of the teeth, there's not another crack anywhere in the rest of these teeth. Um, so this tells me it was definitely abuse. You know, we shock loaded it really hard on the last obstacle in Choke Cherry Farmington. You know, if anybody's been out there to wheel, you know it's a pretty gnarly place to go wheel. So it's expected to have a failure on a stock axle when you're running a 40 inch tire. You know, I mean, this is gonna happen. You just gotta expect it. You know, big kudos to Revolution Gear and Axle. That's why I'm putting these back in. These have held up so well. I truly just over abused this thing. All right, so Matt put the new pinion in, got the carrier in with the new ring gear on. We checked backlash. We had about seven thousandths uh, in backlash. You want ideally between six and 10. Then we had to put some marking count compound on the ring gear, run it through the pinion, and check for a pattern. So really what we're looking at is the pinion depth to make sure that the depth of the pinion on the ring gear is ideal. Looked back at the pattern and uh, it looks really good. So actually, I think we're kind of spot on in our first try here, which doesn't always happen. So saves us some time. And um, so now we pretty much just have to button everything back up, put the axle back together, get the shafts back in, brake assemblies together, add some fluid and we should be good to go. All right, Matt, well, we've done it. We've successfully rebuilt the rear Curry Extreme 60 axle in the Triton JL and Matt's front Dana 44. The new Revolution gears went in beautifully. This thing just needs to go through a break-in period and then it's ready to rock. 
the Triton JL, we're gonna go ahead and hit the trail, make sure everything sounds and feels good after the rebuild we did on the rear Curry Extreme 60 axle. That way we know both rigs are ready to go for our big off-road trip coming up in January. We are out in the mountains today, gonna do some wheeling in Triton JL. I got my buddy Blake with us from 392 Media. He's joining me out on the trail. Uh, we really wanted to just kind of get out for a quick jog, make sure everything feels good. And turns out we're gonna be doing some snow wheeling. We got a bunch of snow over the last two or three days here in Colorado, so we might be laying down some fresh tracks. We actually turned to Onyx Off-Road to plan our trip. Um, they've got a cool desktop feature, so a lot of people don't realize that you can actually sign in with your same account on your computer, and you can kind of search, you know, plan your trip ahead of time. So we kind of picked an area that we wanted to explore today. We're actually wheeling out in a new area that we're not too familiar with. So we downloaded a map on the desktop once we kind of zoned in on where we wanted to be. And then it was nice because once we pulled our phone out, pull up the app and you can see that area, click download. Um, so you don't have to actually go seek it out on your phone. It's right there in your content. And, uh, and now we've got a route to follow while we're out here. So looking forward to hitting the trail for a little bit. Um, so far, I mean, we drove a couple hours up here and everything sounds good, feels great. The rear axle came together really well. So no issues yet, but we're gonna go have some fun on the trail and, and um, get after it. So it should be a good day. Thanks for tuning in and walking through the rebuild process on the axles underneath our Jeep Wrangler and Gladiator builds. We successfully swapped out some of the wearable items on our rear Curry Extreme 60 axle underneath the Triton JL and added a new ring and pinion from Revolution gear and axle to the front end of the Blaze JT. We even got to do some snow wheeling and made sure that everything felt great after all the work that we completed. I wanna thank all of you for being such a big part of our adventures in 2020. We had a ton of fun sharing our passion with you and can't wait to do even more in 2021. Drop us a note below and let us know what you wanna see next year, be it a fun trail that we should hit or a new vehicle that we need to build. As always, hit the like button if you did and subscribe if you haven't. Until next time, wander on.